Oh, William's struggling. It's really hard. Oh, he's struggling. Oh, it definitely tastes better than it smells. Best show in Disneyland Paris. We got security. Slight issue. Morning guys, Ree here. Welcome back to my channel, Mummy of Fort Does Disney. And the last day of our trip here to Disneyland Paris. Now I have good news and I have bad news. So the, the bad news is that our flight that should have been this morning has been delayed. We're now not flying till 9.30 tonight, Paris time, which means we are not gonna be home till silly o'clock. Whatever time that is, it's gonna be really late. But the good news is if I can get this room sorted in time, because obviously we've still got to check out the hotel, we can actually go into the park for a little bit before our airport transfers, which I have managed to move, come and pick us up. I'm gonna give you a really, really quick tour of our room here at the Dreamcastle Hotel, which is a Disney partner hotel where we have been staying. I'll give you my thoughts on that. Pack up really quickly and then we can go into the park. So this is one of the rooms. Because we are traveling as a party of five, we've actually got adjoining rooms. So I'm gonna give you a little packing low down as well as a room tour at the same time. This is my carry-on case that's got all my like laptop and camera gear and stuff in it that we're actually gonna keep with us. And the other cases are being checked. So, lovely big beds, really, really comfortable. We've got a nice uh, chair in the corner. There are sockets, one side, which we definitely didn't have in the Adagio and we didn't have in the Explorers either. Lights at the side of the bed, nice spacious rooms. I've been using this as a desk, my laptop and stuff. Mirror, TV. I've got these two cases to finish packing. Then each room has got these lovely bunk beds and they have got, each one has lights underneath. The top bunk, I will say, is lovely and comfortable and big, but it's really quite high. So my seven and 10 year old slept up there, but I don't think I would have been happy. Well, I definitely wouldn't have been happy with my five year old up there. So just be aware if you've got very small children, the top bunk might be a bit high for them. Down here, I have got the clothes the girls need to put on today. So as you can see, I've still got lots of bits and pieces lying around the room that I need to gather up and pack. And back here we've got a large wardrobe with a safe. So of the three Disney partner hotels we've stayed in, the Adagio did not have a safe, the Explorers did have a safe. This safe, however, is the largest safe. This was big enough for my big laptop to fit into, which was really good. And we have got a mini fridge and some shelving space in here too. Then in here, the bathroom is looking a bit messy. We've still got all the toiletries I need to gather up. Nice big mirror, hair dryer and pull out kind of zoom mirror, is that what they're called? Magnifying mirror maybe? And then a nice bath with a shower over the top. Overall, these rooms have been really, really lovely and I've been really pleased with them. The second room is literally a mirror image of the first. So we've got bunk beds here and then nice large beds. These two cases are packed up and ready to go. These are just our coats that we're gonna wear today. And then I've got, these are bags that we're taking to the parks and of course passports we need to keep with us. The only difference is this room has coat hooks here and the other room does not. And then mirror image bathroom. So I need to finish packing this case and this case. My auntie and uncle have offered to take some stuff back with them in the car. So rather than overstuffing the cases, I'm actually gonna give them some of these bags just to chuck in the car and that way it's just less for us to lug through the airport. So these cases actually won't be nearly as full as they were on the way over. This case, I'm going to leave half empty. So when the girls come out to the parks and they want to take off their big dresses with hoop petticoats, they can just pop them in here before we get in the airport transfer. So my thoughts on the Dream Castle, it's beautiful. It's really, really lovely. It's definitely the nicest hotel we stayed in. The Explorers last time, it was more appealing to children perhaps, pirate ships and things. This is just very dreamy, and lovely and it feels a little bit more luxurious. Definitely much, much nicer than the Adagio. It is more expensive. You kind of get what you pay for, but if you're going to actually spend any time in the hotel, which we did a little bit more this time, not nearly as much as perhaps we would in subsequent trips because we just felt that we had a lot to get around because it was the Christmas season, we want to cover it all. But this is a really beautiful hotel. I would recommend it. The shuttle buses are very frequent. Shuttle buses into the park, not much of a problem at all. Shuttle buses home to any of the partner hotels we found are kind of a little chaotic and there is a little bit of pushing and shoving and sometimes you have to wait through very big crowds who are getting very restless to get onto the buses and which can be quite stressful after the fireworks if you've got small children so just be aware of that if you're staying for fireworks 
which obviously you need to do at some point during a Disney trip. It's difficult. You've got small children, they don't want to stay up that late. And actually we found staying up later more difficult in the cold and the dark than even though we were staying up later in the summer. So I think it's the cold, doesn't it? It makes everyone a bit more fractious. I'm now gonna pack up as much as I can. My family have just gone for breakfast. I have said, just go. I'd rather skip breakfast and get this done so we can get into the park. We can go and say goodbye to the castle before we go home and soak up the last magic of Disney before we get on our flight, which hopefully won't be delayed any further. So I think we're just about packed. I've got all the cases ready to go downstairs. Everyone is back from breakfast and dressed. These are fantastic. My auntie bought these for me yesterday. They've got like hooped petticoats underneath. What is cuter than a hooped petticoat on little girls? Honestly, these are beautiful. So I'm gonna go and take some really pretty Christmas pictures today. So I'm just wearing a Disneyland Paris Spirit jersey and I'm taking my purple bag to go with it. I have got ears. They are attached to my bag using a slap band to avoid having to wear them now and dig into my head. Parkies do dig in your head a little bit sometimes, don't they? Um, so I've got just got them attached to my bag until we leave. William, the hat. <laughs> the hat. Is it surgically attached to your head, darling? Uh, Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. And William's got his um, Fantasia bag today, but also his 30th Letterman jacket, which is lovely, isn't it? You don't wear this much at home, do you? Um, not really. really. So yesterday we did buy spirit jerseys for the girls. Zara's is a little big, but my auntie, who's amazing with the sewing machine, said she can make it a little bit smaller for her, which is amazing. Now they don't have kids spirit jerseys and we're a bit gutted. Well, there weren't any at all that you fancied today. There were the Minnie Mouse ones, or there was a Captain Marvel. Which and... didn't even say Disneyland Paris on it. So what's even the point? You did really fancy the stitch spirit jersey, so we thought if we could get an extra small, then maybe Lenny could knit that at the sides a little bit and turn it into like a large kids rather than extra small adults. Yeah. So we're gonna have a look for one of those today. Any other objectives today for our very, very last day in the parks this year? Maybe catch, what's the, like, the magic shine called? Mickey the Magician? We're gonna try and catch that because we tried to do it yesterday, didn't get around to it. We'll look for a stitched yeah. spirit jersey. Girls, what would you like to do uh, do today on our very last day in the parks this year? Uh, roller coaster. A roller, <laughs> roller coaster. Roller coasters, okay, whatever. Roller coasters with hoop petticoats? Fine, like we'll make it work. Idea. <laughs> we'll make it work. As soon as Daddy get out, gets out of the toilet, we need to check out. Get out of here and get into Disney. Yay! Yay! We have arrived back at Disneyland Paris, the bus station anyway, for the last time this trip. We have left our cases in the like cases room at the Dream Castle. <laughs> the only thing is they didn't kind of sign in the cases, they didn't give us any receipts for the cases. It was just a case of you can leave them in this room, the room gets locked after checkout. I would have felt a little bit better if they'd labelled them or something. Like, how do we know that someone else isn't going to wander off with them? But I guess we did look around, there were cameras and things, so hopefully everything will be fine. Anyway, heading into the parks now. Everyone wants to start in the studios. Yeah. You want to see if you uh, can have a look for either an Avengers Campus or a Stitch Spirit jersey. Yeah. The adult one and make it smaller. And then we want to head to grab some snack and go and see Mickey and the Magician, which we love, I don't we? We've got a Shoe. You've got to sort your shoe if you walked out with your shoe.
we are nearly at Avengers Campus, which makes William very excited indeed. Yay! The parks are really busy today. When I found out our flight had been moved, initially we put on a waiting list and then luckily I had an email to say we were able to come into the parks. But the fact that we had to go on a waiting list first, screams coming from behind me in the hot tower of terror, the fact that we had to be on the waiting list first um, suggests that the parks are near enough full. Thing about Avengers Campus, there are so many characters in just such a small area. Um, there are like character experiences you can book and you can queue for, but also there are so many characters that will just randomly photobomb you, which is amazing. Um, they're just wandering around, it's really, really cool. So, we're gonna go to Mission Equipment and look for this spirit yeah. jersey for you and see if we can get one to be tailored in a little bit to be made a little smaller. Disneyland Paris, if you're watching, probably not watching, but if anyone is watching or has any connection to Disneyland Paris say please please we'd like some more children's spirit jerseys let me know in the comments if you agree there seem to be like more of them in Walt Disney World you know matchy matchy ones there's a grown-up version let's see the kids one as well please 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 So last time we were in here, the only spirit jersey we saw, we saw this Captain Marvel one. I mean, this one's really cool as well. But, is that a hoodie? Yeah, that, that is really lovely. That is like a Captain Marvel version of the hoodie that Will wears. Without a hood, hoodie without a hood. But, adult spirit jersey wise, last time we were here, they did have Avengers Campus spirit jerseys here. Now a hoodie is gonna be difficult to be make, make smaller, whereas a spirit jersey would have like a seam across there, so that's gonna be easier to take in. So I asked a cast member and they sold out Avengers Campus spirit jerseys a while ago, so sorry. Even though as an adult, if you want one, you can't have one, they're sold out. So now the other thing we're on a lookout for, yesterday William wanted a Spider-Man lolly. They didn't have them anymore in Restaurant and Police, so apparently they have them in this year truck. Let's see if they've got them in stock. No, it doesn't appear they have them in this truck, Will. Which truck did you think they were in? I don't know. You saw, they really were in a truck somewhere, were they? Uh, I think so. You think so, right. Hmm, okay. Uh, they might be in that one, let's look sharp. But... There, that oh, one yeah, is... They yeah. They're in that one, are they? Yeah. So they have them in this yeah. truck yeah, down here. Okay, so apparently they have them in this truck. Also, we've never eaten in the Super Diner, so that's something for another trip, which is an Avengers Campus Marvel-themed eatery. Guys, as we are super close to Toy Story Land, Shall we go and do Toy Story parachute drop thingy? Because, you know, because that's one of Mummy's favourites. Oh yeah, I love that one. I know the children love it. I'm like, ugh, with heights, but um, it's all good. The children love it, so let's do it. Okay, so this is concept art for what they've got coming for the expansion of Walt Disney Studios Park. So they've got not only got a Frozen Land, I think they've got a Rapunzel ride planned. I think Frozen's supposed to be coming in 2023. Oh, for you. So I think this is going to be Star Wars in theory back here, and this is going to be Arendelle just behind Toy Story Land. And there's going to be this big lake, which will be a bit like Echo Lake, I would imagine, in Hollywood Studios. And here is the concept art for Arendelle. The Frozen Land is going to be stunning. Oh, this is new since we were last in Toy Story Land. So we've got Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, Etch, Mr. Evil Pork Chop, the binocular goggle guys. Oh, Buzz is talking. Hey, Buzz. Oh, we're going to go up there. Ready to ride? Yeah. And I am as well. Ready for the ride. Ready for the ride. Ready to fly just like the sun. Yeah.
embarrassing. So, the plan is now to go and do Ratatouille. Now, we did Ratatouille in Epcot. Zara wasn't first. But you were only four then. You did have your 4D glasses on. 3D, 4D, whatever it is. 3D. 3D. So, she does web adventure without the 3d glasses on it looks a bit blurry but at least it's not too overwhelming so i just said do that if you don't if you don't like the 3d jumping in your face it's very immersive it can feel a little in your face take your glasses off and it's no longer in your face so we're going to do that because we haven't done that before and then hopefully catch a performance of mickey and the magician so this section of walt disney studios park just feels exactly like the french pavilion at and you were actually in france so also got these lovely Christmas stalls that have been set up and next to Ratatouille they've got Bistro Chez Remy which apparently is a really nice restaurant. Not eaten there before but people rave about it. So it's my understanding that this ride opened before the Epcot version. Do you yeah. know the date this ride opened? I don't know but I think the year might have been 2013. Okay but the Epcot one wasn't till... Literally 2021. Yeah. So we've been on the Epcot one. So the Epcot one must have literally opened only a few months by the time we went it on it. It was like November or December 2021. So this is one of the rare ones where Disneyland Paris got it before Florida. Oh, well, that's cool. Did you enjoy it? I think you did, didn't you? Well done, baby. That was very good. I'm going to say something. It might be an unpopular opinion, though. I don't like it as much as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway in Hollywood Studios. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes. I don't know if that's just because we love Mickey and Minnie so much. What do you think? Which is better, that or Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway? Yeah. It's very similar technology with the way that the cars all kind of dance. They go, don't go on a straight track. They all kind of just, dance is the best way to describe it, really, isn't it? They kind of, I don't know, it's very clever the way it's all. Yeah, it's all this seems like each one is like driving itself on its own random. It's really clever. Did you enjoy it though, or was it scary? A bit of both. Well, I'm very proud of you. Very proud of you indeed. Bella, what do you think? Which one's better, that one or Mickey and Minnie in Hollywood yeah. Studios? Yeah. Mickey and Minnie, we love. Like, that's good. Okay. Mickey and Minnie, we love. And if you're looking at the walls, we're technically through the gates, the pictures that everyone takes of the aliens, and um, Buzz Lightyear to Infinity and Beyond. They are just behind the RC racer. So you've got the sort of French bit by Remy that we've just come through. So it's between the French bit with Remy and Toy Story Land, and then you just head up this way towards the cards area and you find these gates. to Lorraine, Caitlin and Dylan Hi. who are subscribers. It's really nice to meet people and it's really sad when people send me a message afterwards going oh, we did see you, we didn't like to say yeah. hi. It's always nice to say hi. <laughs> Thank you for stopping. Right. Have Thank a fabulous you. trip. Thank you. Right guys, we stopped in Hepcat Corner. Oh my goodness, they got the gingerbread trees. We haven't tried those yet. Yeah. Should we get... Right, so we want gingerbread trees. And a Should we get a Madeline? I quite like We quite them. like the Madeline, didn't we? Right. And it might have the stuff on it. Cool. Anything yeah, else? And a great shortbread. And a great shortbread. Okay. And then we're going to go, go, go to try and get into Mickey the Magician. Yeah. I knew he could do it all this time. Magnificent. 
So we're here in the waiting area for Mickey the Magician. Daddy of course picked me up a hot dog and eaten some of it, so that's good for my breakfast. So the Madeline used to look like this, and now there's... Yeah, the, when we had one the other day, it didn't have a 30 it on had it. Like so that. we have got the 30 for the Madeline. We enjoyed that. It was just cake, really. Yeah. We've also got cake? a cookie. Yeah. A cookie. Whilst I get the cookie out, I'm going to show you these gingerbread Christmas shortbreads. Now these cute. feels very moist, actually. They come in a pack of two, a two is a portion. Zara's chosen this cookie with sprinkle. We've also got this Groot shortbread, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Which, and it's got the same flavour. Same flavour as last time, because William really enjoyed that. I thought it was quite plain, but you know, good. Okay, so which oh, which snack have... is going to be the best one? I'm going to try the cookie again. Go on then, try oh, the cookie. Snap it off, snap it off. While I eat some of this um, snap it off. hot dog. Mummy, so I will try the Madeleine. Go on then. It looks more purpley, the icing does. I mean, it was dark last time we were um, eating. True. How's the cookie, Daz? I'll snack off for the Very good. Mm. As good as that? Yeah. How's the basic snack, snack but all the basic is well done. Okay. Oh. Have some of no, no. Have the some 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 There we go. Zara wants some 30. That's, that's plenty, no, that's fine, that's mm. all. And trying the shortbreads is going to have to wait because we've just been called to stand up for a little picnic um, to go into the theatre. And there's no eating or drinking in the theatre, so we will try the rest of it yeah, when later. we get out. So we've only actually seen this show once before in June, but I would probably say this is my favourite Disneyland Paris show. It's very reminiscent of the, I think it's Disney Dreams, was it called Disney Dreams? That we saw on the Disney Magic at Sea Cruise in that, in the Disney Dream show, it's like a little girl who needs help and then lots of the Disney characters come in to help her. And with this Mickey and the Magician, it's very similar. Mickey needs help and then a lot of the different characters from the different Disney films come in to help him. It's amazing songs and things from all the different films. So it's, well, he, it's got a bit of everything. He's supposed to be cleaning, but then to... he, he practices his magic. Then every mm. loads of characters come in to help yeah. him. But it's got a lot of characters and a lot of different songs, isn't it? So if you're only going to see one show in Disneyland Paris, I would make it this one, personally. As amazing as The Lion King was, this one just encompasses so many different characters. So there's something for everyone. Okay, I knew that was wonderful, but I'd forgotten just how wonderful. And I stand by my statement that if you're just going to see one show, see that one because The Lion King's amazing, but some of The Lion King's in that one. Frozen's really good, not on as of today, but there's Elsa's in that one. It's just got a bit of everything for everyone, agreed? Yeah. Would you say? Mixed variety. Mixed variety, something for everyone. Best show in Disneyland Paris. So we've just stopped off to eat some of these snacks that we bought just over there. Um, before Mickey and the Magician. Now, going You're going to try, try okay, mummy snap it off. This is the, the gingerbread tree. It's like a cake. What do you think? William, try a bit of this gingerbread cake thing. And nine. Nine out of ten. You would say nine out of ten. I'm really surprised you like that. It's quite a strong gingerbread smell to it. What are your thoughts on it? Now there's white chocolate and it's got like, I think it's like a cookie gingerbread flavour. Okay, like it's got a very distinctive smell. Well, let's try some of the gingerbread tree and let me know what you think. These are the ribbons, by the way, from Mickey the Magician that they've saved them. as souvenirs. It's all right, try that. Go on, Daddy, for try the gingerbread tree and let us know what you think. See, that's the face I was expecting, actually, Bella, <laughs> from the smell of it. I didn't quite like it. Bella, what's your honest review? A six. 
that kind of face, I was expecting a two. <laughs> well, actually, like a four. <laughs> not the five. Five. Right. Not you're not, not you're not fast, you. What do you think of the gingerbread tree? Tastes bad. It smells. Yeah, I've got to say, it's, I'm not from the smell of it. It's quite pongy. I'm not expecting much. Okay. I, for, it's really quite whiffy from the smell of it. Honestly, I'm not holding. Right. Um, well, well, well. Mm. It definitely tastes better than it smells. It smells pungent. It looks pretty from the front. It feels so moist it's almost sticky. So I didn't hold out high hopes for it. You're right though, it definitely tastes better than it smells. The smell is, is quite overwhelming, isn't it? It's quite, um, like, I can smell it from there. It's strong. Um, the Madeline, however, as much as it doesn't quite live up to the pictures, it's really good. It's very nice. It's just like a really nice kind of light sponge. Mm. Is, it, is it going to be like garlic? Possibly. Yeah, gingerbread. Possibly. Yeah. You can try the Groot shortbread. Go on then. I mean, you've tried it before, so drum roll. Do you still like it? Oh, good. Wow, that was a shocker. here in the Walt Disney Studios store. So you could go for a Euro Disney, which is from the original kind of uh, 30th anniversary collection. Hold the, out of curiosity Will, hold the actual, I know Linny said she'd take it in for you. I'm not even sure that's gonna have to be taken in much. What do you think? So you could go from the Euro Disney collection or we could look for a Stitch one. Now I think they've got Stitch ones over here. They did have Stitch the other day. Ah, Stitch. Question is, do they have the right size? Right there. We need an extra small. That's an XXL. No extra small. No extra small. Oh, extra large. That's so good for you, Will. Or, Will, this turquoise one. Have a look at the back. Mummy's actually got one of these. I'm just going to check the size. That is indeed an extra small. So, which one would you prefer? Oh, Stitch or turquoise? Or I always like you in blue because you've got blue eyes. Do you want to match Mummy, yes or no, or Sebastian? Oh, I to decide. I won't be offended if you don't want to match Mummy. It's just that like there's a lot of options. There are a lot of options. Do you want to look to see if they've got an extra small in Emporium? Ah uh, yes please. Come on then. These are cool rainbow Mickey bowls. They'd be good for like oh Mickey Minnie Mickey Minnie they're so cute. For like I don't know ice cream what would you use those for? I don't know if it even matters cereal? they're beautiful. They, are they big enough for cereal? They're gorgeous. Wow. I love them. Um, Salad? Salad, I suppose. Yeah, tiny, salad teeny, bowls. tiny bowls of salad. And then these are mini mouse mugs and they've got kind of glitter on them. In fact, they're kind of dusty. I did not spot this floral collection of mini mouse plates and homeware before. I need to look for the Mickey on a train decoration as well. See, that is exactly like Mickey on the train from the very front of the parade. I think that would be a very special one as a memento of our trip. What do you think, guys? Come on then, let's go and buy him. Come on, Mickey, you're coming home with us. I've got to say, what's that? They look like socks. It, I thought it was a bag, it like a pull-out bag, but I can't make it out. It's fluffy. It's like woolly. Made in Taiwan. Yeah, like okay, sock. but what is it? Maybe it's a thing. I don't think, a fabric of a, some, yeah, I don't know what that is. They have got Christmas slap bands and also these little Christmas purses. These are super cute. I think we might need a little Christmas purse. What do you think? That's lovely. You want to go to the Emporium? Come on then, Bells, let's go. Time to park I, it hop. It's risky, but I, I think we should take the risk. You think it's risky? For the it's stitch risky jump. For the okay. It's very risky, but if they don't have any Emporium, Are we not getting one? then they might not have No, they don't have the right size. He's decided to hedge his bets and go to Emporium. on the lookout. They've got the little like knobbly bits on the top of the hangers. 
saying which sizes they are. So we're just going through everyone. They've got a lot of sizes, but we're not sure if they've got an extra small. Ugh. Interestingly, if you're looking, if you're coming to Disneyland Paris soon and you are looking for the Christmas spirit jersey, they have absolutely loads of them. So do not panic about that. I still haven't bought one. I don't know if I need one. It's my last day, last opportunity. Do I need one? It's 90 euros. It's more than a standard spirit jersey. And I can't wear it in January. I could wear it every Christmas. Extra small. The other option is we have... Okay, so you could go for this Euro Disney one. Well, what are your thoughts? Do you want to go for a small stitch or an extra small Euro Disney? Which is relevant to the 30th anniversary. They've released this collection for the 30th. What do you think? It is nice. I don't know. It's bold. I feel like an all over white one is more risky <laughs> than one with colour on it. Let's have a look at the back. Oh, hang on. It says Euro on both sleeves, does it? Or just one? Just what? Euro, Disney, and then a plain sleeve. I don't know, guys. What do we think of this one? I'm not sure I would wear it. I can see it on Will, though. Oh my goodness, in the corner of Emporium, have I never noticed this before? You can actually see into the Dapper Dan's barber shop. It's not open at the moment, but it's gorgeous. Back onto Main Street, because they did not have an extra small stitch. They did say, however, we should try Main Street Motors, because they might have them in there. Or we could try Disney Village, but I feel like once we've left the parks, because it's our last time this trip, if they don't have them then, we've missed our window. So let's give Main Street Motors a go. And then and you're then thinking maybe like, go for the Euro Disney one, is it? Yeah. Okay. They can't find it here. Okay. Large. Any luck? Any luck? Yeah, We're feeling quite invested in this now, well. Any luck? Oh, Bella! You found it. Ah. Did you? Oh, Bella. XL. Hawkeye Bella. I think it's XL. Does it excess or XL? Extra small. XL. Oh, fantastic. William, hold that up against you. Let's have a look at it. He says extra small. Okay, hold it up against you. Yay. Will it need to be taken in? Possibly. Possibly a little. It is a bit big, but Linny did say she'd take it in a bit for it you or up a bit. Down the it might need some trimming down the bottom. That's all it really needs. Right, come on then. Would you like, as the girls had spirit jerseys, would you like that, my darling? Yes, please. Okay. We're heading towards Fantasyland. Children are thinking maybe they want to go and meet Mickey. And just, just one last time before we head back home. I know everyone says that Disney is magical at Christmas, but I don't think anyone could prepare me for just how amazing this trip has been. Disney was extra pixie dust, isn't it? Yeah. Christmas pixie dust zipped up Tinkerbell magic. It might be November, but here in Fantasyland, the weather's really nice again. It's been cold during this trip, but right now it's super mild. So we've all just, other than William, who's really not bothered about it apparently, we've all just um, lost our coats, stuck them in pack away bags. Pack away bags are a must, I find, for Disney trips, shoving things in. So let's go find Mickey, shall we? Yeah. He'll be so pleased to see you. Christmas memories, oh, and I've been longing to hold you close. Forget about everyone else. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories, oh, oh, la da da da, oh, oh, la da da da, oh, oh, la da da da, making our Christmas memories. So you should come back home to me And when we wake up in the morning I'm gonna play those carols that you love We'll be singing all the melodies Until the sun comes up That was so magical So, so magical What is the Christmas miracle that our plane got delayed? the same hat as William um, William's got the same hat as Mickey, exactly. It is a Christmas miracle that we got to meet Mickey. A blessing rather than a bad thing that our plane was delayed. So now we're going into Toad Hall to try and find Daddy a fool who's gone to find himself some fish and chips. Um, and we can have a little look round in Toad Hall actually. Yeah. I've never been in here.
So how was your food in Toad Hall, yeah? Lovely. Fish Did you in film any footage for me to insert? Uh, I forgot. Right, all um, fired, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I sacked myself. You sacked. So I'm sure, ooh, wind, high size ideas. I'm sure um, Toad Hall is very nice. Apologies, I have zero of his meal to show you. Oh, we have a look at So we're going to go to Shally Ola Marina. My French is appalling, apologies, people. Uh, it's also very windy. Um, because they have food there that the girls will eat. The girls are just not into fish. And apparently it is just mainly fish and chips there. So the girls will not be happy. Right, then eat or eat then right? Eat then right. Eat then right, okay. Eat then right. Can William's hungry, William has spoken. There. In fact, William and Bella voted for eat first. Zara voted for Big Thunder. Zara always votes for Big Thunder. What do you want to do, guys? Zara always votes for Big Thunder. Regardless of what the options are. So, shall I? Oh, the marionette. Oh no, shallow dealer marionette, which is Pinocchio's village house equivalent in Florida. So we have got hot dog meals for the girls, which are quite plain hot dogs. William and I are sharing a Bavarian hot dog thing, which has got like a really nice, we had this before, it's like a curry-ish sauce on it, which was delicious. And William wanted to try an apple strudel. I said I did not want a dessert. The girls' meals have come with mini magnums, so we can go back and fetch those once you've finished yours. But I said, you know what, I do not want dessert from in here. I want to go and get myself some sort of Mickey pop out in Fantasyland after this. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But you've got a magnum. That's what you chose with your meal. Oh, you're gonna, so hang on, you lot are gonna eat your desserts and then you're gonna like try and eat Mummy's Monkey Pop too. Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah. I want both. <laughs> so yes, you're gonna try and eat Mummy's Monkey Pop too. <laughs> so William, apple strudel, not my thing at all. I'm gonna leave you to try this and give us the verdict. The girls have got these mini magnums. It's like a, uh, it's like apple as you expect, but the outside, I'm not really sure what it is. Pastry? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Hey, so it's like maybe green apple kind of flavour. Is it just like an apple pie? Uh, almost. Almost like an apple pie, but not Except quite. the outside isn't the same. Because it's more like puff pastry? It's more like, I don't know, it's quite thin. Oh, ah, okay. It's an apple pie it's a bit thicker. Do you like it? Yes. Would you rate it? Eight. Ooh, an eight out of ten for flavour. Excellent. So the Bavarian hot dog I thought was delicious. William's really liking the strudel. The girls' hot dog was nice, I had a tiny bit of the end of Zara's. The chips are just a bit, if I'm honest, here and Cafe Hyperion. And my husband said that the chips that he did not take a photograph or video for me in Toadford Hall were actually really quite nice. But the chips here I'd just say were just all right-ish, would you? They're not exceptional, in my opinion. When the girls get back from their emergency wee and finish their ice creams, I'm gonna head out into Fancyland, see if I can find some sort of Mickey on a stick type dessert. We are gonna have to start thinking about heading out of the park soon to get back to the hotel, pick up our cases, we don't wanna miss our airport transfers and miss our flight, which hopefully won't be any further delayed than it already has been. Because this delay has been like a little blessing in disguise, a little pixie dust of extra day in the park. But flying at half past nine means we are gonna be getting back super late to today, so I really hope it's not delayed any further than that. So for our final ride of this trip, as we were eating in Pinocchio's restaurant, the children thought it was only right to ride Pinocchio's attraction. And then if we've got time, I'm going to try and get a Mickey something on a stick to walk back down Main Street, dash back, hopefully make it in time for our airport transfers under the dark light. Hi, diddly dee, an actor's life for me. A diamond chain, hi diddly do. You sleep till after two. It's great to be a celebrity, an actor's life for me. Hi diddly do, an actor's life is fun. <laughs> we made it! Yay, I got my Mickey! Apparently, this is a shortbread pot. It's from this stand just kind of right by the Dumbo Rice. You want to try it first? Because you haven't had dessert already? Oh no, that was me. Go on then. 
Oh, crunchy? Crunchier than you thought? Okay. Can I try? Mmm. Mmm. Quite crunchy. I like it. Mmm. Crunchy, kind of covered. Of course. Shortbread, kind of covered in. I'd say white chocolate. Oh, William's struggling. It's really hard. Oh, he's struggling. Oh. Very nice. White chocolate cover Mickey. Yum. I'm glad I had my Mickey thing, because I wanted a Mickey treat. But, if I'm honest, that is just as pretty as, but not as nice as, the marshmallow pot that we had on a stick in June over the other side of Alice's teacups. So if it's a choice between the two, I'd go for the marshmallow one. Would you, Will? Marshmallow. Oh, I don't know. You don't know. I'm they are both the nice. Marshmallow one. This one is pretty hard when you... It is, it. because the marshmallow one is like chocolate and then obviously it's squishy because it's marshmallow underneath. Whereas this one, it's quite, um... You've got to give it a really hard bite to get into it, isn't it? It's going to be kept in the, the fridge. Takes all bites. Very nice, okay. though. Very nice. Just, if you've got a choice between the two, I'd go for the other one. Okay, it's just starting to rain. I know we'd rather be wet and dizzy than dry anywhere else, but uh, it is no time and to go. And it's not that bad. It's not that uh, time. It's I not guess, even... I guess this Zara's controlling the weather. I know. We, we are having a one or two last, like, having to leave I Disney know. tears. The last, the I, I, I tears is it is always an emotional time because let's face it none of us want to go do we no today there's extra tears from the sky <laughs> Us change the girls are in spirit jerseys instead of their Christmas dresses. I've stuck some leggings on. We're now going to get into the airport transfer, so bye bye, Dream Castle Hotel, and uh, let's catch this flight. We are at the airport. Um, apparently, you're supposed to do the tax refund, I must admit. This is our third trip for us this year, and it's the first time we've hopefully will have managed to pull off the tax refund. We did try it last time, it went a bit wrong because we hadn't validated our stuff with World of Disney. So we validated our purchases in World of Disney. Then you have to take that validated form from whatever you've purchased down to the tax refund place, which is Actually, in the airport, you've kind of got to go all the way through and down. Now, technically, they could ask to see your purchases, in which case I could have to take my husband and all the children downstairs. But if they don't need to see it all, then... Well, I'm going on my own. I'm hoping they don't need to see it all. Because I think it's only going to work out it's about €30, Euros and it's, a it's quite a faff. It's not enough money to risk missing a flight, but I think, for now, we're OK for time. Okay, so that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to go. So one of the machines was broken. The other machine, I tried to scan it on. It said that it wasn't validated, so I had to take it to the desk. But that's because the machine at Disney was broken. They'd done it out by hand. And then the guy just stamped it, and all I had to do was slot it in the like post box thing, and that was it. So it was actually quite straightforward. If you do need to do your tax refund in Disney, you just take all your receipts to World of Disney, but you have to take your passport with you. This is what we didn't manage to get right last time. So you take all your receipts to World of Disney, take your passport, and then take your validated form and your passport, and technically the goods. They might want to see the goods that you bought to that desk in the airport or the equivalent in the ferry terminal or wherever you are, and then drop it in the box, and you should get a refund to your credit card, unless you've asked for cash back. I've asked for a credit card, so I guess I'll just go back on my card. 
So we found the EasyJet desk, but the bag drop is not open until seven. We have been sitting here about 20 minutes now, um, just wasting some time. The children are um, bored, they've got devices, and uh, I'm just hoping that they're gonna not lose their minds before we can move on to the next place and then we can go and perhaps go and get some food or something um, and answer some of your questions that you guys sent in on Instagram so um, we will get to those I just want to kind of get rid of this massive stack of bags so we can sit and chill um, I also need to speak to them about the special assistance we did use special assistance for the first time ever I just didn't even know it was a thing or we were entitled to it um, obviously we've used priority access in the parks but special assistance in the airports so is for anyone that needs well special assistance so anyone you know with hidden disabilities like autism or I guess physical disabilities that make it difficult for them to travel through the airport so I'm hoping after this there won't be any like queuing or anything because hopefully we'll use that special, special assistance. We've coped in the airports before now but last on the last flight the flight out to Paris it was busier than I'd seen it would you agree like have you it's not been that busy as busy as it was last time when we flew out it was mental wasn't it the airport was yeah. it was insane um, I think on the first the flight in June when we went out everyone was like oh Bristol Airport's really crazy but we arrived just before all the carnage we saw all the people like coming in behind us so we were really lucky to have missed the queues anyway without the special assistance on the, la the flight out to this trip I'm not sure the children would have coped because yeah it was just mental it was mental so if you um, think you might be entitled to special assistance just speak to your airline before you fly um, I just literally phoned EasyJet and they booked us in for it so I'm hoping they'll have the same the same with this end as well uh, it just meant that children didn't have to queue in the very long line in security. The only thing I would say is I wish they had the special assistance line that kind of siphoned off. It kind of, you jumped the big queue in security, but then you kind of went into all the carnage and it was kind of busy through security. Um, it wasn't like kept up or anything. Um, and that bit of security was really, really quite busy and frantic, more so than we've ever seen before. Um, and then when you're getting on and off the plane, then we were already kind of queuing there. And the passport check when we got to France was a massive line. Um, so the children didn't have to wait in that either. So that was really good. So fingers crossed that we're just as smooth heading back to the UK. And uh, hopefully not quite busy for everyone else. Okay, there are so many of these questions. I think we need to start getting through some of them now. Well, okay, you're ready to help me. I know you're tired. You can help mummy, can't you? Help mummy, help pass some time. Okay. So how and where can we meet most characters, please, if we do not manage character uh, dining? So the characters are all on the app. That's the main thing, is look on the app, see where they are, and know what time the character slot opens. There's two types of character meets. There's the character meet that's under the character meet section of the app. Then there's the character meet that's under attractions. Now the ones under attractions are Father Christmas, for the princesses and Darth Vader, also Darth Vader and Mickey Mouse. So those you look for under attractions. If you're just using like the standard like standby line, just get there before the character opens. It's like before the queue opens and then you're like in the pre-queue. Um, if you're using the priority access, then you need to go there and get a comeback time for characters that are just standard characters, and then you just stand in like the priority access line for the characters that are attractions. Also, that makes sense. there are like pop-up characters and some characters there are. that aren't on the app. For example, Piglet in June was a pop-up character. Yeah. He just randomly, he just showed up. He was just there, and they don't tend to have photographers with them today. They tend to just and be there. And also, like. Um, in Adventureland, I'm pretty sure you can meet and you'll see a couple of signs yeah. around the place. Just and sometimes they just walk through. <laughs> sometimes in Fantasyland, just like Alice will walk through or the Pink House just walk through. Yeah. And I tell you what, a really good place to meet characters is, is Avengers Camp. They just hang around and fruit to bomb you and just, they, that's a really like, intent, like a dense square, the two characters per square feet kind of place, isn't it? Next. Is it worth staying off site? I would say yes. Staying on site obviously has the extras of you can book dining reservations earlier, so that's really helpful. It's probably going to be easier to get on the buses as well. Probably, there seem to be more Failing buses that, and the, the buses seem to go one hotel to the bus stop, back and forth, back and forth, so they don't seem as busy, whereas the off-site hotels, the Disney Partner hotels, seem to be bonkers busy. But price-wise, I think when I originally booked it, I priced at Newport Bay for the six of us, because Dylan was with us a while for that trip. Newport Bay for the six of us for five nights was the same price as and that was with no flights was the same price as annual passes 
and staying off site at the Adagio and flights. So for us that was a no brainer because we wanted to come on a few trips rather than just the one trip. Okay, um, I've heard it's extremely busy that the illuminations and fireworks are jam packed. They are. We were using the priority access area and someone else was asking about that actually. Best place for a family for easy access card for illumination and parade. Fireworks. I mean, you can see them from really far back. The day that we were in Plaza Gardens, I kind of messed it up and I didn't realise the time. We literally just stood outside Plaza Gardens. It was still magical. If you can get closer up, I felt like it engaged the children a lot more. I felt like you lot weren't engaged when we were further back. We use the priority access area, which as you're looking at the castle is like over towards the left, kind of um, between, sort of towards, if you're looking at the castle, you can also see like the, the entrance to Adventureland. It's kind of down that corner. Um, and then you, it's you plus two people. It's one, one of these passes the children have plus two people would be allowed in there. Or if you've got an infinity um, pass, then you can use the, like, the special um, area for fireworks too. But failing that, just get there early. The floor is generally very clean if it's dry. You can literally sit on the floor. Just get there super early and just take snacks. Like, get your food, get some quick service food, get some snacks and just sit on the floor. You'll be tired by then anyway, and just sit on the floor and wait and just picnic out. That's what we did even in the priority access area because we were already tired in June. We sat there for a while on the floor and just kind of soaked in the magic. You guys just had some activities to do and a lot of eating, didn't you? And that was fine. Just somewhere you can see the castle, really, um, as close as you can get to the castle, but just, just get there and, and picnic, I say. Get there and picnic. Do you do the meal plan? With all the Christmas food, it's like debating it, but is it worth it? We have only eaten in Disney, but we haven't done a meal plan because we haven't been staying in the Disney Hotel. Um, the Disney Hotel just, it just, it was going to be a one-off trip for us if we stayed in the Disney Hotel and we wanted to come on a few little mini breaks see a few different seasons. So the meal plan is only an option with a Disney hotel, but to be honest, if I was not a Disney hotel, I'd probably, I would probably do a two meal plan. I'd probably do one sit down and the breakfast, because for quick service, we tend to share meals. We don't even have one each to week because they're huge. Have you ever been successful at finding a last minute table at Aubergine? Um, no, but when I got our actual table at Aubergine, it wasn't even available on the app. So it was within that two month window, which is a 12 month window if you're staying at Disneyland Paris actual hotel, so that's worth doing. It was like, it was two, it was less than two months, wasn't it? But it wasn't even letting me click into October, do you remember? Yeah. Um, so I just ended up phoning Disney. I used the annual pass line, but you could just phone them Disney. So sometimes the reservations that are not available on the app are available like on their system. It was a bit nerve wracking because it wasn't, a, like the reservation wasn't on my app. It was just a reservation number, just like a random number sketched down just like is this even real but it was and it was fine favourite season at DLP oh I don't know that's a hard one it is a difficult one isn't it the 30th celebration's amazing loved Halloween but I think Christmas might be my favourite I have no idea are you too tired to care? are you too tired? <laughs> too tired to think <laughs> are you too tired to think shall I answer the rest of do you want to be? Do you want to try and uh, help no, the answer? No, I just don't know. You don't know I, the answer. I wouldn't know anyway. Probably. You wouldn't know anyway, regardless of. Right? Do you need to book meeting Santa? No, Santa is under the um, like attraction rather than the characters. You can book the only characters you can book um, unless you've got a priority pass would be the ones in Avengers, aren't they? The character. What they called heroic experiences. So hero training center. Yes, the hero training center. You book, and you can only that becomes available to book once you be, you get within the gates. Is that yeah? Like? It's like a virtual queue, basically. Yeah, like a virtual queue. Now, for all the other car characters, you can book a slot if you've got a priority pass or a disability pass. But no, with Santa, you just show up and you just show them the pass, and like we were straight up, it was really great. Does Disneyland Paris do anything for Easter, William? Um, I actually don't know. Gosh, okay. Something William just knows. I haven't heard about anything. Looking to book Disney Cruise Line 2024, how much did the price change from itinerary release to, I guess, um, later in the time? That, that question was cut short. If you watch this video, the one where I booked the last Disney Cruise, I was on the phone because I couldn't book it online because I had a placeholder and I needed to use that. But like, basically, I already had, they had a deposit paid and I needed to um, claim my 10% discount. So I couldn't just do it as a straightforward thing online. I like, booked a room on, so, so I, got on, I got a hold on the phone, it took hours and hours, it just, just computer says no, it was going a bit wrong. But the price went up from the time 
the reservations went live, like it became available to book, to when I finally got it booked several hours later. Now they honoured the price from the time that I like, originally spoke to them, but it went up considerably, like a few hundred pounds during that day. So if you are going to book a Disney cruise, I'm not sure what the prices do like later in the weeks and months. But the other options you could use a travel agent, there are lots of independent travel agents that will perhaps help you out with that and um, chat to you about that. I've had a lot of people approach me actually, do I want to be a Disney travel agent and help other people with their holidays? As much as I'd love to, I just don't know if I'd have time. <laughs> It does sound really fun though, it does sound really fun. Favourite restaurant in DLP? Favourite quick service, favourite buffet, favourite table service, overall, whatever. Plaza Gardens. If you've got to go in overall, if you're only ever going to eat in one restaurant, Plaza Gardens. Like, Au Berge was amazing for the character dining, but the food was a bit fussy for the children. So while the experience was amazing, some of the food just went and eaten. I'm going to say either Au Berge or Pin Kitchen because they had a really nice mocktail. They did have a really nice mocktail. And okay, and, and, and Pim Kitchen is just such an unique restaurant. It is. I can't decide between. Auberge was amazing. The interactions with the princess were absolutely outstanding. But the character interactions with Win Plaza were amazing, and the children, because it was a buffet, could go and get what they wanted, and there were things they were more likely to eat. On the flip side of that, it was a bit stressful because it's like, oh, we don't want to go and get anything because the characters might come around. Girls, out of curiosity, which is your favourite restaurant? This is a question that's been sent in. Ooh, favourite restaurant um, in Berge, Disneyland Paris? Auberge for you. Even though the food was a bit fussier. Well, I like my favourite food. the food, food. I quite You like, like the pasta, actually. Pasta Garden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I quite like the experience in Auberge Plaza yeah. and what? Oh, Waltz was amazing as well, actually. What about um, I like Captain Jack's? Rain. Captain Jack's too. Captain Jack's is good. Um, Pim Kitchen? The blue in, one? No. Uh, Plaza. In Plaza. Okay, you like the drinks in Plaza. Um, what were your thoughts on Waltz? Because you were really excited to go to Waltz. You did like the Mickey Potatoes. You were really excited know, to go to Waltz. It was Waltz. really good. And like. Oh, I don't know. It was just like. It was. I know. I, were, were you, I, was had it a, everything? I had a really nice sweet corn soup with popcorn in it. it yeah, that was really unusual. Um, was it everything you hoped? Like, was it what you expected? Did it deliver up with your expectations? Yeah. Good. Good, good. Okay, so I hope that helped. <laughs> quick service wise, what's the best quick service one? It was really good to go and watch that show in, although the food isn't amazing, it's a bit McDonald's y, um, in, um, not Videopolis, what's it called? Uh, Cafe Hyperion. It's pretty basic fast food, whatever. The fact that we could sit there and eat while we were waiting to watch the show was killing two birds with one stone and keeping the children happy rather than having to queue and just like sit in an auditorium type thing waiting for the show. That was really good, I thought. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> um, I also really like the one we ate in today, the Pinocchio one. Yeah, also That's I good. Our, yeah, they have a such nice brain such a nice hot dog and you can always find seats there that's never when we like I can't find a seat some of them are like oh we can't find a seat but like, not it was like nice but not, you can't find seats it's, it's really very small it's a small restaurant actually I'll tell you which one was also quite good because um, the other one had Mickey pizza Colonel Harvey's pizza outpost Colonel Harvey's you pizza could see, outpost like, characters come past. yeah that was good um as much as I've wanted to eat in Balnotte for ages Next time we want to make a pizza, I think we'll go to Colonel Harfies, to be honest, because that was a bit less stressful. It was a bit lighter in area as well. Bellinotti is a bit dark. And I even, I even think it's bigger. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so having said that I wasn't going to answer these questions till after we checked in our luggage, we're getting through them, we're doing quite well. The one that Baloo peeked his head in, I thought that restaurant was quite nice. It was quite light and airy. That was good. I like that. How many days would you recommend to see the Christmas exclusive stuff? Two or three at least. Yeah, it's just, just if you're going to Disneyland Paris normally, if you want to get a lot done, at least three days. Yeah, I don't think, I think less than three days. Like my auntie and uncle came in with us for one day and I was like, oh, how are we going to show it to them all? Um, they felt like we'd done a lot, I think. They said they felt like they'd done a lot. I felt like we'd shared a lot of the magic, but then I was like, oh, there's so much more I'd like to show them. I'd say minimum three days. Minimum three days, even if you're just doing the Christmas stuff. Because obviously you're not going to just do the Christmas stuff and like not ever do an attraction. You're still going to eat. We were there five days. Did we do most of the Christmas acts? We still didn't get into Victoria's. We didn't get into all the Christmas acts. No, we did, we did a lot. lot. Like, we did get a lot. Like we didn't go into a net. Yeah. No. Like there were some places we didn't go into. No, it that's true. It just wasn't going to fit in our schedule. Best way to get a good picture with the castle. 
uh, no people in the background. Uh, over to the side of the castle is a good option. Sometimes you can get over to the side of the castle. Or if you have perhaps like I don't know, if you if you have a table for Plaza Gardens. That was what I was going to say next. Car and, like, Plaza Gardens. Past eight. Plaza Gardens character breakfast in the morning. Oh, yeah. Um, Only a slot you can get. Then yes. Uh, or you can do what Anastasia does. Shout out to Anastasia, who. Manages to stay all the way till the end, till everyone leaves the parks and gets amazing pictures in the dark. But we're always too on our knees to do that. <laughs> Although probably all the, the probably people will have like gone and there'd be buses by then, possibly. But yes, um, go and you can go and check out her account. She's lovely. She does amazing, amazing Disney bands. Okay, will you ever come to Disneyland in California? Oh, we'd love to. How much would we love to go to Disneyland in California? Very much. Very much. Like the original part. We want to see where it all started. Is, we're not really sure what we're going to do after the because... No, we haven't decided it's yet. Because the frozen land will open shortly after that. I know. So, like, William wants to come back to see that. But then equally, this is in California, guys. California. Like, we really do... I, I'd love to see, like, the park that Will, Walt had his actual hands on and to see you know, where everything sprang from. I'd love to, love to, love to, love to. So yes, we will at some point, I just don't know when. We definitely will at some point. Um, can you take snacks and food into the parks? Yeah, you can. They do, there is security going into the parks, um, so there are things you're not supposed to take in, but snacks and food are fine. You can take your own snacks and food. Although you can't like are, picnic Yeah, in no picnicking. The, you like, can't. You can like obviously sit down in a restaurant. You can sit down in a restaurant and order food. You can't like eat your, you can't have a picnic in, like go into one of the sets of like the tables and the quick service and eat your own food. But you can, yeah, I mean, we always take like, I often take like cereal bars and like mini cheddars, kind of things like that, maybe bags of sweets. Um, just, you know, to keep people going if necessary. But yeah, you can 100% do that. Um, what you really need to do is take a water bottle that you can fill up because otherwise you spend so much money just buying a bottle of water. It's just such a waste of money when you could buy a Disney snack. Let's face it, would you buy buy water or something shaped like Mickey? Something shaped like Mickey, That's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer, isn't it? Like, you could buy, you could buy <laughs> that reindeer cake pop thing. Really buy that reindeer pop series. Or, or a bottle of water. Yeah boring and it's not much more expensive <laughs> no exactly if you have a reservation for dinner do you need to queue is there a separate entrance um well most of the most of them you have to have a reservation you can't just rock up so yeah it's not really be... walk-ups but <laughs> you walk can you can walk up on the day and like say and you could try is there a table available you could try Please. you could try that you could definitely try that um, people might cancel last minute that's like true last second Information on DAS, does it cover your whole party or just the individual and one carer? The DAS is what you call it in America, isn't it? The Disability Access System. I did cover a lot of it in the Everything You Need To Do Before Disneyland Paris video, but I am looking to do a more in-depth video about the disability system. Basically, there's two systems. There's the Easy Access, which ha covers a whole variety of um, ailments, conditions, and then there's the Priority Access. So the easy access we don't know that much about because that's not the one we use, but all the information for that can be found on the Design Paris website, which I will link in the blog post below, which there's always a blog post to go to each video and I'll put the information there. Um, but the priority access for rides, it says on your passes, it says rides four and parades and shows two. I believe that means it's you plus four people for a ride and you plus two people for shows and parades. Yeah. But because we've always got like three passes with us, then um, it's not too much of an issue. I'm tired. I'm talking in circles. Will you be doing a Christmas snack vlog? Love your content. Oh, thank you. I've tried to include the Christmas snacks all through this series. I'll, they'll definitely be like reels and shorts um, I will put together. Um, so check on the channel. I'll put like one of all the snacks. I'll definitely on a short if there isn't a dedicated one. I might do an Everything We Eat Disney on Paris like um, video. Um, but who knows? Maybe by the time you see this, it's not even Christmas anymore. I'm not even sure, but they will definitely be. I have a look back um, in all the vlogs. I will have included all the thing, all of the um, snacks that we ate in the vlog series, and I'll put together like um, definitely a short. You know, it's almost like a reel on, on YouTube, um, and there'll be reels over on my Instagram too. Okay, it's nearly time to check in now. That has actually um, been a good use of time here. At least it's kept you. I would say it's kept you awake, darling. You look half asleep. It's been tiring. Are you Disney tired? Disney tired is like happy, but like, ow, my body hurts because I've walked so much. <laughs> Bag drop has opened, so 
we'll hopefully be able to get these bags all dropped and we can get through to security and the departure lounge with minimal effort first. Send my husband down to find seats by the gate. It's a lovely, big, spacious terminal with lots of seating, which is nice. Done the toilet. <laughs> Just, um, we got security. Slight issue. You know, with the American tourist cases, I mean, you might not know, but to change the combination, you've kind of got to pull back the lock thing that you click the zips into. And while it's pulled back, you can change the combination. And this happened to me once at the house where I went to open the bags and my combination was not the combination opening it. This happened at security. So I could not open my bag. I knew it was full of my laptop and all the stuff I need to pull out. So I had to go from 000, 001, 002, and work all the way up until I found the numbers. It was 180 was the number it had been swiveled to. I'm just glad it wasn't 999 because um, it took me 180 tries to get it right. Got there in the end though. I'm gonna pick up some snacks because we're all just peckish and need to keep. Um, Everyone busy. Some snacks, some sweets maybe. Oh, and some drinks I guess because we've emptied out all our drinks, haven't we? So, <laughs> what did I get from the shop? So I got water to refill all our bottles. Yeah. We got airport Pringles. And then we got some things that we're not so used to, so, to seeing. These little bear cake things, I think you'll like those. Pringles. Some sweets, yeah. Sweets! <laughs> and these look interesting. Huh? Like, Digestive, I think they're going to be like, no, like a rich tea with, with, um, so milk is quite nice. We get that in the UK, but not everywhere. I think it's going to be like two rich teas with some chocolate in between. Yeah. And that's it. Is that it? That was it. Well, kiddos, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat some of this. Yeah, do you, do you want to help me? You, you're not hungry, are you? You don't hungry. Do you don't want any Pringles? I'm hungry. <laughs> Maybe I'm just tired. I often confuse tiredness and hunger. So let's give one of these biscuits a go. They look quite good. Yeah. They've got chocolate in the middle. So, let's see. Mmm. Very nice. Yeah. Mm. We are home, it is the next morning. I am still half asleep, but we had such a magical trip. Thank you so much for coming along with us. I now need to unpack, which is something of a daunting job, but you can catch the unpack with me up here just as soon as that is live. And down here will be the haul video where I show you everything that we bought in Disneyland Paris. So thanks so much for watching. See you soon, bye.